Hi. I'm enjoying the morning sun and the rainbows so much, I thought maybe I'd record another journal or two. This one is, is called Free Will, Some Basics, and it is from 2-12-2010, 10.59am, and the Mayan day was one caban, or earth. Where am I today? Who and what will come through? As I am expanding ever up and out and ever in to the center, I discover all sorts of marvelousness. It is an ever new journey, each day a mystery laid out before me. But the choice is mine, which way to walk and whether to take up that which lies before me. None compels. And because none compels, I slip some part of some days and maybe even some larger chunks of days into the old ways, into routine, missing the majestic mystery so close beside me it could bite me if it would. No, none compels. Some seek a God that compels. Worse yet, some seek a God that interferes with free will. Stepping in when things go to chaos, to rack and ruin. These are not fully aware of the full implications of such thought, such desire, for if they were, they would realize it could not be so, and it is best not so. For what is free will anyway? Do we ever consider this? Our most basic tenet of life, at least here in the USA, we are so proud of having free will, and we guard it jealously in some ways. In others, of course, we have left gaping holes for the manipulators to come in and work their will among us. Still, we pride ourselves on having and maintaining some certain sense of free will. Well, I say then, what is it? Do you know? Many don't, I assure you, and they reveal it in their speech, in their thoughts and words. I make no claims to all knowledge here, but I can lay out some basics around the free will concept, what I've come to understand. First of all, it means that Source and we abide by an agreement of non-interference. It means that we get to do what we want to do. And that's pretty basic. Too many people don't follow that up, though, and realize that it also means if we want help and assistance of any kind, we must first ask for it. We must invite it. So. For those who blame the woes of the world on Source, on God, please reconsider. Free will has two sides. Now that is basic enough. There is a story told about a man walking along while having an inner battle with a demon. The man cannot see the demon, of course. It all goes on in his thoughts and feelings. Anyway, he is walking along, and there is something else he cannot see, lined up and almost stacked in rows to a great height all around him, are great fiery angels who stand at the ready, swords of fire drawn. Why do they wait and watch like that? Do you know? As you probably guessed, the man has not requested any help. He is lost in his own thoughts. Furthermore, the angels, of course, can see the demon with which he does battle. And it is a puny thing indeed. It is a bit of a joke next to their might and abilities. Now, this man is not as pathetic as he may sound, my friends. At one time or another, we have all been this person blind in our ability to see across dimensions and also in our understanding of the most basic tenets of free will, 
So, let us not judge, nor think ourselves so much better than another. The other aspects of free will have somewhat to do with cause and effect, with the things we set in motion with our own free will, and with receiving the return currents from the energy we sent out, so that we can adjust our behavior, our understanding. Imagine, if you will, a scientist in his white coat in his lab working on experiments. Now, further imagine that we take away from the scientist all the results of his experiments. He gets to perform them, all right, but before the results can manifest, we sweep in and take them away so that he cannot see them. What shape is he in? How can this scientist then modify his experiment, as they all do, based on the results of his previous experimentation? Have we not gut shot his ability to learn anything through his labors? While this is easy enough to see, it is not so much different to apply it to our study of free will. In the laboratory of life, it is most important that we, the human scientists, the experimenters in this lab, get the results of our experiments delivered to us. How else can we learn? What else makes any sense? Where many go off the train track here is in their understanding of who and what they are. Too many of us identify so much with the body that we don't realize that we are so much more than that and that we transcend many bodies back and forth through time. We have been robbed of the understanding all of our ancestors had about life taking on different incarnations. And it is a bit of a shame. It leaves us without a very important piece of the puzzle. When we add just this one piece to the puzzle of our understanding of life, just look at the great gaps it fills in. There are so many, but some obvious ones are that all that comes to us in this life, we have somehow participated in creating. It is the result of our previous experimentation in the lab of earthly life. Some call it our karma, but it is simpler than that, and that is a trigger word. It is simply the law of cause and effect, just what any scientist in her lab relies on implicitly. This law is so necessary to make any sense at all of her work. Something else we seem to have forgotten en masse is that energy or matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be changed. We can only change its state. Thus, there really is no death. It is a false concept entirely. It is laughable once we realize this. It becomes almost comical, the ways we have been made to act and feel in the presence of this false creature, this chimera called death. No such thing. We are all eternal. No, the body is not eternal, of course. That is silly. Anything that is matter that exists in 3D has three points, a beginning, an ending, and a middle part, the alpha to omega. Well, that concept is a good deal bigger, so we'll leave it. Just know that we are literally sparks of the divine fire. We are one with that. That abides in all that is. Thus, we too abide in all that is. I won't go too far in that direction because I don't want any religion or even spiritual nonsense to interfere with the basic realizations available to us all. There is no mumbo jumbo to this, no hocus pocus either. It is just basic fact which, though quite intentionally hidden from the masses for long eons, is still nonetheless the reality, provable by any in the laboratory of being.